Chopping Mall is a 1986 sci-fi horror film directed by Jim Wynorski. It's produced by Julie Corman, wife to the famous Roger Corman. Dr. Stan Simon gives a presentation about the Protectors to a crowd of people sitting inside the mall. The Protectors appear to be futuristic military-grade robots equipped with lasers and sleeping darts, among other things. It's not specified who the people in the crowd are or why Dr. Stan Simon is informing them about the protectors. Do they work at the mall? Are they prospective buyers? We just don't know and we never find out. In all honesty, the writers just want to explain to us, the viewers, what the protectors are quickly. They don't want to do it the old-fashioned way, through actual storytelling. In this exposition-heavy scene, it's explained that protectors are the after-hours mall security as a second line of defense. In addition to the protectors, new steel security doors have also been installed as a uh, first line of defense. This must be the most secure mall in America, and quite possibly the world. What could possibly warrant such a high level of security in a mall? We then meet two women working in a diner discussing going to a party later. Check out all those uh, posters in the background. If you look really close, you'll pick up on a theme. All these movies were produced by either Julie Corman or Roger Corman. I gotta give it to whoever came up with that. That's a, a pretty cool way to promote your other movies. Lightning strikes the mall and a power surge is sent through the control room of the protectors. The protectors unexpectedly come online and kill the engineers in the control room. A group of stereotypical sex-crazed teens working at a furniture store talk about a party they plan on having later after hours in their store. I will let you in on a little secret. Just between you and me, okay? I don't think they're teenagers. I think they lied. They're in their mid-twenties at best. The guy's girlfriends come over and they all drink beer and have sex in the sales room floor. That seems like that would be a little awkward. And when I say a little, I mean a lot. Unknown to the teens, the protectors are now online and patrolling the mall with a newfound lust for blood. The movie was initially released as Killbots, but uh, it didn't do very well under that title. So you release the movie in the theaters and it doesn't do very well. What do you do? Well, I would think that's that. It, did, it just didn't work out and you just have to move on. Well, that's not what these filmmakers did. In 1986, the slasher genre of horror, which includes films like Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Friday the 13th, was very popular. In an attempt to cash in on their popularity, the filmmakers decided to repackage the Killbots and put it back out there under a different name. I guarantee you, Roger Corman had something to do with that. They made a new poster and changed the name to make it look and sound more like a slasher. Basically, they just completely misrepresented the movie, but it worked out for them. The second time around, the movie did much better and was more profitable. What's the lesson to learn here? If you want to sell something that sucks, just put cool cover art on it. So does killer robots rolling loose in a mall after hours, killing sex-crazed teens, sound like something you would be interested in watching? If not, you're not truly missing out on too much here. Having said that, I really did like the movie, but that's not really saying a whole lot. I like a lot of stuff that other people would basically consider garbage. Having seen The Chopping Mall a few times now, it's, it's difficult for me to say what the filmmakers actually did right or well in this movie. It's really just a run-of-the-mill, mediocre, sci-fi horror film from the 80s. But if you like 80s movies, then you'll probably like this one too. The strength and enduring quality of this movie is the 80s vibe throughout and the uh, sense of nostalgia that it invokes. It would be difficult for a movie to get much more 80s than this. Ta-da! Everybody, this is O.D. 
I stand corrected. The main location is a three level mall, which is definitely a staple of the 80s. Sadly, malls are currently dying out, and to me, it's a real shame. It's like the end of an era. Not all things from the 80s were great, though. Like this. Bertie, are you trying to get me drunk? The biggest surprise of this movie is the music from Chuck Serino. The music in this movie is way better than the actual movie itself. Chuck went out of his way to make a truly amazing soundtrack. I hope he got paid well for it. I liked the soundtrack so much that I had to get it. And when I first started collecting uh, soundtracks on vinyl, this is the second one I got. And Waxwork did an excellent release of this. This is not a sponsored video, but if you call me Waxwork, I'm here for you. And I'm sure we can work something out. Currently, this is my all-time favorite horror soundtrack that I own, and I listen to it pretty regularly. It's worth watching the movie to just hear the music alone. The robots do look pretty good in this movie, and they're, they're pretty believable as being robots. If a mall were going to employ robots as security guards, I suppose they may look something like this. I'm just surprised they actually made three of them. This is a low-budget production, as evidenced by the attachment to Roger Corman. It would have been much more cost-effective to just make one robot and through the use of movie magic make it seem like there was three robots. Then again, maybe they did just make one robot and they did use movie magic and I was fooled into thinking they did make three. You can't have Roger Corman's name attached to a movie and not have any nudity or explosions. There are plenty of boobs in the beginning and lots of explosions throughout to keep the guys happy on this one. And for the ladies, you get nothing. You get this guy. Leslie. I do like the idea of a group of teens being locked inside of a mall with a uh, blood crazed security guard chasing after them. That sounds like a pretty typical slasher setting. I'm surprised that hasn't been done yet. Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge. Again, I stand corrected. It's my theory that the filmmaker's original idea was to just make another generic slasher. Later on, it was decided to do something a little different because the slasher genre had become so oversaturated. I'm sure someone close to production said something along these lines. Slashers aren't cool anymore. We need to do something different. What if we made our security guard a robot? And not just any robot, a military grade robot with lasers on their head and sleeping darts. And not just one robot, Let's make it three robots. Surprisingly, the director thought it was a great idea, and then we got the kill bots. And you know what? It flopped. That's my theory. I could be wrong, I don't know. It wasn't until after I watched the movie a few times that I realized how many actors in this movie had been in other really classic horror movies. Deathstalker 2 isn't a horror movie by any means. It's a fantasy sword and sorcery type movie and John plays the lead role and his character is so much more likable in this one. He shines so much brighter in Deathstalker 2 than in Chopping Mall. I've already done a review of Reanimator and I, uh, I didn't exactly praise her performance in it. I still stand by that, and after seeing this, I stand by it even more. But, she is pretty easy on the eyes. You can expect to see a review of Munchies in the very near future. I suppose you can call Munchies a uh, 
a guilty pleasure of mine. That's a uh, pretty impressive list of movies to have been in. Another equally impressive list of movies to have been in. You can also expect to see some reviews of these movies coming up. I'm sure you're picking up on a pattern of my, uh, my movie tastes. Just like it's not easy for me to say what the filmmakers did right, it's equally difficult for me to say what they did wrong. The movie isn't perfect by any means, but it's also not terrible. It's really just a middle of the road 80s horror film, and there's nothing really wrong with that. The story of Chopping Mall is a bit uninspired to say the least. It's interesting with the whole robot security guard aspect, but overall, it's just not a very interesting story. At the end of the day, we're just watching a movie about a group of disposable teens trying to get out of the mall. Let's say you went to go see a movie, and this was the poster. You would have certain expectations, I would think. Chopping Mall is clearly masquerading as a slasher. And what are slashers known for? Seeing people get killed off in various gory ways, typically with a bladed weapon. Does Chopping Mall have any of that? Yeah, sorta. But no, not really. I expected to see people getting chopped up with an axe. But what I got was robots with lasers that seemed to hit everything other than the teens. The robots aim with the lasers is not the best. The teens are pretty much the typical stereotypes that you would expect to see from a typical slasher. There is no attempt or a minimal attempt of any sort of character development that would elevate this slasher to a higher level. Let's face it, when you go watch a movie called Chopping Mall, you expect the very best in character development. Let's look at Allison Sparks, for example. She's the main character, I think. And we know little to nothing about her. We know just as much about her as we do this guy. Leslie. All I can say is, if there was ever a face begging for a punch, it's this guy's. God damn it, I don't know what it is about your face, but I want to deliver one of these right in your suck hole. Is there anything I can do to work on that? No, so you not wouldn't... really, it's your face. As a result of the lack of development, there is no emotional attachment to any of the characters. And when someone dies, you just don't care. And let's be honest here. Most of the characters in this movie have no point other than being in this movie so they can die later. Are you afraid of death? Yeah. Me too. And there's no way out of it. You're going to die. I'm going to die. It's going to happen. There seems to be some rule somewhere that if you have a lot of people die in your movie, it somehow makes it better. It doesn't. Let's talk about the robots. It's reasonable to assume that a lot of fancy technology went into their construction. In the process of this movie, the robots shoot off about a thousand laser blasts. And I can only recall about five times that the robots actually hit one of the teens. The teens weren't exactly making themselves hard targets either. They would stand right out in the open and almost perfectly still numerous times. It seems like these fancy robots would have a better targeting system. Or they would at least have a targeting system. The next logical question is, why do they have lasers at all? And that question is actually answered. For instance, Lasers positioned here can cut through any sort of debris. That makes sense for a security guard robot, doesn't it? Now, let's look at some uh, movie errors. An hour and a half we bail this barbecue and it's good times to the max. You've just got to show. Susan. Brennan, you ass. I'm not in the mood for games. Thanks. 
The multi-million dollar question is, why does this mall have these robots? And how can it possibly afford them? It would be nice if this movie provided some sort of explanation as to why this mall has these robots. It would make sense if this mall was like a secret entrance to some sort of covert research facility. But it's not. It's just an ordinary mall. If the mall was a secret entrance to a research facility, that would have made a much better movie and a much more compelling story. It must cost the mall millions to have these three robots and to pay for two engineers to be on site at all times monitoring them. I wouldn't be surprised if those robots were the most valuable thing in this mall. So back to one of my original questions. How can the mall afford these robots? If I were going to give Chupping Mall a grade 0 out of 5, I would say negative 3 out of 5. It's not a great movie. It's not a horrible movie. It's just a... it's just a movie.